Okay, uh, oh, yeah. push record. Alright. Alright, here we go, everybody. This is the Premier League Season 3 Grand Final Empire versus Virtus Pro to Empire. This is game one, technically two, because Empire start with a 1 0 advantage. You can see the green little pip up there up the top. Empire start with that 1 0 advantage. They did actually play Virtus Pro earlier in the evening, and uh, Virtus Pro unfortunately fell apart fairly quickly. Empire just proven to be a little bit too strong. Virtus Pro making some critical errors. They were looking strong in game number two in their best of three earlier, but unfortunately just got a little bit cocky and fell apart. Hopefully, though, they have learned their lesson and they will be a little bit more cautious. Even when they've got a good lead, they will be very cautious and very mindful about BKB timings. Anyway, regardless, we're moving on. And, of course, also, we'll see whether or not they allow Wisp to swip through it because, of course, Empire have proven again and again and again exactly how devastating they can be with that hero. But Nyx Assassin, the first ban here for Empire, along with a Shadow Demon being banned up by Virtus Pro. And Empire have the first ban, obviously, starting off as the Radiant side. What will they pick off next? Now, Virtus Pro have consistently had, or quite consistently had, Nakes banned against them. A lot of teams really worried about the damage that they cause and the way that they use the Nakes. I don't really blame them, because Virtus Pro are one of the teams who really sort of brought him into favourite, sort of brought him out in the light, started running him around, especially in the early early games in the Premier League. They won, uh, I think, several of their first four matches with Nakes, using him very, very effectively. But we'll see what they decide to get. And is in fact going to be a Bounty Hunter ban. They're more concerned about that. Batrider being the next ban there for Virtus Pro. And it will be a Wisp first pick for Empire. And pretty much if you let Empire get Wisp, it's pretty much without a doubt that they will pick Chaos Knight to go with it. However, Virtus Pro's strategy earlier was to allow the Wisp pick and then to grab themselves a Chaos Knight. But they go for the Undying and the Keeper of the Light. Now this could be an aggressive try lane from them. It's one of the ways to try and shut down that CK is just to throw a even more dangerous trial against him. That said, CK may, what they may do is run the uh, trial with CK and then try and throw a carry into mid, something like Luna, who can handle the solo mid by themselves, but is also fairly effective in the late game. And CK's role will not be to carry so much as to just get kills. And it's going to be Darkseid picked up by Empire. What else do they grab here? Darkseid being picked up. And I've got to say, whatever semi-carry melee hero that they pick to go with Wisp, it is going to be even more effective in the hands of Darks here as well. Obviously Darks, and there we go, it will be a Chaos Knight Empire. If you give them the option, they pretty much invariably grab Wisp and Chaos Knight. The question is whether or not Funic, who really made a name for the team, or really made a name for the hero as well by playing that Wisp, whether or not he will actually be playing the Wisp. Because the last two times uh, Empire have run Wisp in the Premier League, it's actually been SS who's played it. So they might be doing a little bit of role switching again. We'll see whether or not Funic runs it. Most likely, Blow Your Brain will be playing the Chaos Knight. I get the feeling we're probably going to see we're probably going to see Scandal take the solo mid. The question is which hero he's going to be playing in that mid role. Reserve time. At the third pick here for Virtus Pro. Now they might want to secure some kind of hero to go with the Undying Keeper. It's the kind of thing you can like throw in a Tiny, or even a Spin, actually. Spam that sort of Stormball business. It's the kind of thing you can try and throw against the Chaos Knight and the Wiss. The question is, they might actually... Empire can actually try and run dual lanes. We've seen things like Chaos Knight go mid with a hero like Jakira, and then you have Wisp sit in the jungle and then um, just focus on pulling in his farm there, and then just have some other solo hero handle the safe lane by themselves. It is definitely one way to do things as well. That said, we may just see Empire just sit down in the bottom lane and just look after themselves. I mean, they could actually, they could just send, they could actually, what they might actually end up doing is Chaos Knight and Wisp together in the bottom lane and then have something like Lena. Lena or, Bat, oh, well, not Batrider because he's banned, but something like Lena, Lashrak, basically just do, abandon, and, abandon the suicide lane and just do Naga some mid-pulling. Naga Siren, though, being picked up by Virtus Pro. Now, what they did earlier with the Naga Siren was they actually ran her as a support. And I'll be interested to see if they do it again or if they actually try and farm it up as some kind of character. But this is looking suspiciously similar to their first game of the evening versus Empire. Now, unfortunately, what happened was in that match, it was actually a gyro... Empire were actually running a gyrocopter against him, if I remember correctly. It wasn't actually the cow side, but what went wrong was gyrocopter got uh, an unscouted invisibility room. Virtus Pro, they didn't see the Invis rune being picked up by Gyrocopter, and Gyrocopter happened to find the gank that Virtus Pro were trying to lay. What they did was they had Naga Siren and Rubik hiding in the trees, and unfortunately that went pear-shaped, they got slammed, lost a couple of heroes there trying to get that gank off, lost the first blood as well, and it just pretty much just made their trial lane fall apart from the get-go before the horn had even blown. 
So, unfortunately as it was, it kind of just set the tempo for the game. Then Virtus Pro never really managed to recover from that, especially with their other lanes not doing as well either. But Queen of Pain, the next band here. Templar Assassin also being banned out as well. I don't blame them there either. Stacking Neg Armor from Riptide and Meld is one really quick way to tear Chaos Knight to pieces. Plus also the spill damage is nice against the CK Illusions as well. Magnus so being banned out by Virtus Pro. Again, another decent band. You don't want Magnus and Darkseer here working their double vacuum magic. That's just pretty damn brutal. It is utterly ridiculous, to be honest, if you just have Magnus. In fact, it even allows you to do something like just have Darkseer surge Magnus into position. You can just get off a good skewer. Oh, drag people in, and Darkseer follows up with a wall and a vacuum. A very easy wall and vacuum. Fairly uncomplicated business there. Ah, the final band, though. Empire. What are they going to pick off here? Nature's Prophet, the final Dying band from Empire. A little bit worried about that split, split push potential. It's always something you've got to watch out for with Keeper of Light. If you throw a Keeper, say a Keeper, a Phantom Lancer, and then... Uh, Nature's Prophet running around. There's lots and lots of split push until This is actually fairly scary. Naga Siren also pushes all right, yeah. pushes fairly well herself. Obviously, using the illusions to tank and just use Riptide to push multiple lanes at once. Also very effective, but maybe not in this case if Virtus Pro are running her as a support. We'll be able to tell once we go into game. I should also be able to tell depending on who plays the hero itself. But we we'll had to tell once we go into game. We'll just check her item, her first items, and that'll give us an idea of what she's doing. Ten seconds remaining. But one last ban here for Virtus Pro. Five seconds Empire are probably looking for another semi support as well as a solo mid if they're planning to run Wisp. And when I see Empire play, I get the. I, most of the time, I think uh, their Chaos Knight tends to wind up in the safe lane. So I doubt we'll see. I don't think we'll see the dual mid business. I get the feeling we're going to see Wisp and Chaos Knight taking the safe lane. They Green might go for somebody in the jungle, but it really remains to be seen. Rubik, though, the next ban for Virtus Pro. Now, Rubik was actually what Virtus Pro ran with the Naga Siren as a support. So, if they're banning him out, interesting. Just a little bit worried about Empire picking it up themselves, because Empire, of course, could have the Rubik to go with the Chaos Knight as well. But Windrunner will be their next selection. Now, Windrunner could quite easily take in mid, especially if Darkseid is going to take the suicide lane as well. But we'll see what they have in mind. Virtus Pro, fourth pick here. They're most likely. Uh, they're looking for probably a mid here. They're looking for a solo mid. The Undying, they may actually just completely scrap the uh, Suicide Lane. They want to send the Undying into the jungle, but it really depends what they're doing with the Siren. I get the feeling that they may try and just... They could, this could even be an offensive trial with Undying and Keeper Light as supports, and then having Naga Siren just trying to farm up in that lane. But they may go aggressive, just trying to shut down this Chaos Knight and Wisp before they can really get out of control. What is the prize? The prize for first place is $3,000. The second place prize is $2,000. And uh, third place, with Dignitas have already taken the third place prize, which was $1,000. Pick four here for Virtus Pro. Pretty much they're almost out of time. Down to about five seconds. And Night Stalker being picked up. Okay, that looks like they're mid. Unless they're trying to do some shenanigans with the Night Stalker Trilands. In all honesty, I hate the Night Stalker Trilands. I feel like it's mm, pretty meh. At best, and I wouldn't try and run it anywhere near that Chaos Knight either. I get the feeling he really wants his levels here. That said, he needs to be careful, obviously, because he can get counter ganked during the night by a Chaos Knight Wisp coming out of nowhere. It can be fairly dangerous, and of course, with the big Chaos Bolt, getting a lucky Chaos Bolt combined with the Tether Stun may be enough to bring down the Knight's Talk, but they will find. I have to be careful of that. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. All right, final pick here for Empire. I think they're looking for another semi-support at this point in time. Chen. And there we go. It will be Chen. Well, it's not really a semi-support semi arguable there, but Chen going to be picked up. Storm and Storm Spirit, Spirit the final pick here for Empire. This isn't bad. They've only got a couple of stuns to worry about. You've got Wisp, obviously, with a Tether Stun. Chaos Knight with a Chaos Bolt. But a Storm Spirit picks up a BKB, he really doesn't have a lot too much to worry about at all. So we may see an early BKB out of Storm Spirit, but this is an interesting choice. Now this could be a Night Stalker in the mid, Storm Spirit safe lane solo. Actually, not dead sure with it. I get the feeling it's going to be. I get the feeling it's going to be Undying Naga Siren and Keeper Light in a an offensive try, and that's the best way. And it's going to be Storm Spirit and then Tamo. Tamo, well, it's going to be Night Stalker mid, and then Storm Spirit is going to take the safe lane most likely. Whether or not he's solo remains to be seen, whether or not they try and do dual lines, because I've seen Naga. I've seen people try to do a um, 
Naga and a Undying Dual Land before. It's yeah, kind of meh, but at the same time, if you can get a quick level, if you can get a quick couple of levels and get that level advantage, it's actually fairly hard to punch through, especially if they get their level 3 or so. It can be somewhat difficult to deal with, but in this case, with Wisp and Funic, and Funic will actually be playing the Wisp, but won't be SS, okay? Then SS will actually be taking that suicide lane, most likely. But with Funic on the Wisp and Blowbrain on the Cow, so I don't think they'll want to do that. But anyway, let's call it the players here. So we have Godlike playing Chen, SS on Darkseid, Scandal playing Windrunner, Blow Your Brain playing Cow Knight, and Funic rounding out Empire's lineup with a Wisp. And for Virtus Pro on the die side, we have NS playing Keeper of Light, Ammon playing the Storm Spirit, KSI on Naga Siren, Tame My Wild playing Night Stalker, and Santa playing the Undying. It looks like NS needs a minute here. Now, I should mention that uh, Empire versus Virtus Pro, the last 11 matches that they've played, Empire have won 9 of them. So, there you go. Empire are probably the crowd favorites here to take home first place. That said, like we saw earlier, Virtus Pro, when they play well, they can give Empire a run for their money. Unfortunately, they just didn't quite manage to seal the deal to notch a win on the scoreboard earlier on in the evening. But we know they've got it within them, so we'll see if they can uh, see if they've learned from their mistakes earlier and whether or not they can bust something out here. Still waiting on this. Anybody grabbed anything yet? No, no items. Let's bring this up. And there we go. Nobody has picked up anything yet. So, but I get the feeling Ammon is mostly to take the safe lane. But these three here, the Cape of the Light, Undying, and the Naga Siren, those can be fairly. Those will probably be fairly effective against Blow Your Brain with Wisp and Chen. Of course, this is the thing that worries me most because they picked Chen. If these three heroes get aggressive quickly and start taking control of the lane, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be very, very difficult for uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for Chen to really influence the lane and Wisp to even hold the line because Wisp's laning phase is not fantastic. He's really reliant on getting that uh, Reality Rift stun off with the tether and then following up the Chaos Bolt. But when you're outnumbered, it's going to be somewhat difficult, especially when they're being pushed back. And if, if these guys can get their level two, level three, they can quite happily. We leave Naga Siren alone for a bit while they go into the jungle and then try and pick people off. Because of course Naga Siren fairly swift. That 320 base move speed, so it's gonna be not be that easy for Chaos to run her down. He is a little bit faster, but not by much at all. And of course she's got her net, which can keep Emma, which can keep Blue Brains out of her face. Try and find out whether or not they're having serious technical issues or something. Okay, apparently there is an issue over there, but they're not extrapolate. Oh. Okay, so apparently Tame My Wild, that's as crazy as their solo mid, Tame My Wild. Apparently he's gone AFK again. The last couple of matches we had with them, he uh, keeps disappearing randomly. I don't know if he's getting drunk or something. Here we go, it seems to be expected at this point in time, but he's finally back. Okay then. Where are they going with this? Interesting opening there. He's actually picked up a clarity instead. He's gonna be rushing a bottom. Looks like he's picked up a clarity. He might actually just try and void his way through the last hits early on. He will be up against the wind runner most likely, which is gonna be annoying, but still. For low levels he'll be just fine against that. He's got some decent damage to the wind runner. Got 10 less damage there, so he'll be just fighting himself. Although, assuming the Windrunner is actually against it, we'll see which they, they actually send mid. Actually, with items like that, that could actually be a solo... That could actually not be a solo mid, but rather a dual mid. Chaos Knight, we'll see. Could just be looking for that fairly early bottle. Meanwhile, though, a five-man sweep here from Virtus Pro into the jungle. Looks like they're just going to try and get some warding down here. This may backfire against the AC. Windrunner Scandal will be taking the safe lane, which is... Well, it's normally referred to as a safe lane, but this could well turn into a suicide lane, depending on what stays down here against her. And there it is. No, wait, they're ducking back again. Naga Siren's actually farm. It will be farming up there. Although that's it. Undying has opened up with a stout shield, but that he's bought, he's pulled some items somewhere. 
and so he's basically playing a little bit of support. So keep relying and Undone playing a bit of support there. Nagasaran will be the primary farmer. There we go, they managed to the spot a ward. In troll, but uphill misses as well. Is he given up? Oh, no, they've seen, seen the enemy coming apparently. There we go. Counter war being tossed out. They needs another hit. There we go. Finally brings it down. A couple of little bit harassed there. And there we go. Already opening up with that decay. Always frustrating. But meanwhile, did Wiss chop down? Yes, he did chop down the trees. So it's going to do a little bit of stacking. And one-on-one -on -one here. Counts note should be all right to see us against... The uh, CS against the Knights look at now. You might think Kalsar has more damage. You keep in mind, if I bring this up here, you see 52 to 82. This, remember, the number here is only an average display. There is only an sort of a, an average there. But you see the huge damage swing that goes in between. Maybe you can't, depending on the quality of the stream. But yeah, 52 to 82 damage for Chaos Knight. That's a big, big difference. Whereas you compare that to Night Stalker, 60 to 64, a very tight spread. So it's very easy for him to judge when he needs to last hit. Whereas Chaos Knight is really, really random. It's very difficult to tell when he should take a swing just because there's no way to guarantee what kind of hit he's going to make there. You compare the win running, look at that, 46 to 58. Again, not quite as tight a spread, but still. And this could be annoying. This could be really, really annoying. There we go. See, none dying. Stiana, they're going to start getting harassed here by the Wildkin. This is probably one of the best things Chen could do. Now, this is going to slow down his farm. He's going to have to tank a lot of damage. In fact, I don't know if he can do that. But there we go. See, he's going to harass them where with that Wildkin Tornado. This is really going to cause a fair bit of damage. and give Scandal some breathing room. But Scandal should be okay in this case, unless he gets hit by a couple of really big Illuminates. Then he may be in some trouble. The net may pin him down for long enough to land a couple of those. As they get the first blood in mid there, Wisp actually managed to get the kill. With Chaos Knight, they're setting that one up. They went another tether. In fact, they might make another run at it there. It looks like they're getting aggressive, charging forwards, although he's under the tower here. They might not go for that. In fact, going to harass him there with those orbs. They just you need Funny to pick up a bit more mana there, but Wisp actually trying to give him some mana thanks to that tether. They're going to continually tether him up there. We do have an Illuminate coming through to harass. They're going to knock off that Clarity and just do a bit of damage. And it looks like Tame My Wild has decided he needs some help. They're going to bring Anis over to the mid to support. Although that said, he pretty much all he's going to offer is a big nuke, just as it's sort of a deterrent. He's not going to have that power stun that is really, really good for the save. That's the kind of thing you want to stun me like a Fissure or a Stormbolt for. And also he's got to be careful. It's, he is fairly vulnerable to being a hero that they want to pick off. As you can see, he's down to around about half health. Consider yourself denied. And there we go, they might take another run, and there we go, the reality rift gets cancelled by the uphill vision, they get it off anyway, and there we go, Cowspot gonna come in, has to get away from the tower, though, Wisp now gonna try and take this kill, finishes it off for him. Blow your brain being forced to back off, but there we go, Funnick gonna take a fall there, now he's healing up there, Blow your brain gonna charge forward again, needs to change his mind about that, though, wasting a health potion, he went for boots first, Darkseer also getting a kill, and there we go, the Illuminate getting tossed uphill as well, Darkseer actually getting a kill there, with the aid of Chen, Chen showing up with a Centaur, he come in from behind and get that stomp down, and Darkseer has picked up what he needs for his Soul Ring, although he's just gonna wait for the Creator to bring it out, there we go, it's on the way right now, Meanwhile, Chen might be taking a second run over here. He's actually, I think he's actually abandoned his jungle. He's a little bit worried about these guys invading it and causing issues. I think Windrunner is probably just going to go and try and pull herself there. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. And just handle that farm on her own. She's not going to be too worried about that. As it looks like they're doing a lot of damage there. Tame my really struggling with his mid lane. And there we go again, the third death already. The nice stalker, really just not handling this dual mid very well at all. It's not much, to be honest, there's not much you can do about it. This stun is just way too much. And of course, the Wisp Orbs, if you can pin someone down for long enough, which of course with this setup that they can, it does a lot of damage. In fact, I think there's a level 2 Orbs. How much are they doing right now? And you got 50, 50 damage a hit, so it's like 250 damage a, 250 damage nuke at level 2. That's, a re that's generally speaking, 250 damage is like a level 3 or a level 4 spell. That's really, really effective. It's only going to get worse next level as well. But here we go. Storm Spirit still only level 4. Has to be very wary. SS could quite happily dive against him with the backup of Chen here. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Scandal has returned to his lane. Now I'm just looking at the farm here. Scandal is getting a little bit, but not as much life. That said, Naga Siren though. This is the issue. Naga Siren not getting nearly as much as one. Blow your brain. While he's uh, only sitting on 16 and 5. On the other hand, he does have one kill and two assists. And on the other hand, he could be Night Stalker. Night Stalker definitely not having a great time with three deaths already by the five minute mark. I mean, Night Stalker is going to hear that you want to get into a rolling start with. 
And uh, going into the first night with three deaths, that is a huge, that is, that's huge for the other team. That's a crippling start. If he gets picked up again like this, there we go, Tether along with the reality. Four seconds, stun, oh, there's nothing he can do. They just sit there. Wisp takes the kill. As another death. It, the thing is, he's going to go into the six-minute mark with no bottle. He's going to go into his first night with no bottle. He's going to have nothing. A three-second stun. Tether stun not even required. Chen comes in to finish there. Go Black going to take that one. Oh, my God. Virtus Pro, they're just getting shredded. This is why you don't let them have Wisp and Cow so, so mean. That said, though, to be fair, to be fair, Virtus Pro did do extremely well against an Empire Wisp earlier in the evening, but still, Empire just back on track with his form, with, on their form, their fine form with Wisp and Cowstone, they just know these two heroes so well, and there we go, go back going to pick up a health potion, also has his magic wand recipe, plus a brace for the drums later on, and now looks like he's going to make another run here at Stormsbury, does have his ultimate, but not that much matter, vacuum and a Chen, he's just nuking them down, that must have been a high hit. For his te that must have been a high hit for his test of faith. How much it goes at max 200? That must have been a very high roll there. So Meanwhile, though, Wisp and Cow start thinking about taking another run in the mid lane. In fact, they did. They took yet another run at Tame My Wild. And there we go. Here's the first night. He's level 4 at first night with no bottle. And there we go. They lose the zombie tower there. Santa just feeding attack. Winner a little bit of money there. Glover going to go back to base, pick up his items, and then just teleport straight back out in a second. Level 4 there for Keeper Light, really not a great start. He's two levels behind the enemy dual lane. See, Wisp out leveling. This is about the last this is about the last thing you want to see. Where your Night Stalker is being out leveled by an enemy support. That is just that is just really, really disheartening. Now Ammon probably about to get harassed here by SS once again. He can't really afford to try and tank these creeps as Windrunner gets a kill down to the bottom of the lane. And looks like Wisp and Cast on it. Gone for a port. Pick up the pair of kills there. Set up a double kill. And it's 9-1 and one now at the 7 minute mark at the moment. Top lane though. It looks like SS in some trouble. The Iron Shell's doing a lot of damage there to Stormsbrook. Gets slowed down. Surges away. Will it take him out? Yes. Well Ammon gets a bit of revenge. It is at the cost of a lot of health. And he will most likely need to shuttle out either a potion or go back and heal. At the moment, though, he's completely out of matter. I think he's just a little bit worried about Chen popping out and nuking him. He doesn't have a, an escape mech, and of course, it could actually quite easily pick him off. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And there we go, another gank on to. Oh, no chance at all. Chaos Bolt, one more hit, and they might. Nope, they cancel. <laughs> wisely, Orange decides. Yeah, wisely, Brown decides, you know what? Screw that. I'm not coming up here. Immediately flees for his life. Cancel the port. NSO taking tons and tons of damage. A slow being tossed in there by Tamer Wild. A little bit ballsy considering they could have quite easily taken him out. And there we go, Undying has rocked up for the party finally. I hate. Well, the speed being increased there on Blow Your Brain, so they can just run away. Although, actually, they're thinking about fighting here, as they may well go for it. There we go, Reality Rift stuns both of them there. Whisk going all the damage, so it's getting spread out between the two of them. There's Soul Rip. Illuminate comes through as well. Chen popping out of God. Zombie targets tossed over to SS in here now. Now, take my wild. Some serious trouble here. Right, level 2 and the Hunter of the Night. A Chaos Bolt tossed out. Four seconds. Reality Rift as well. And, uh, how many kills and deaths tonight? So we're up to five. Five deaths in eight minutes. Oh, my God. Just... It's like, it's like it's like he's the support being hunted during the night time. And now support, where are they going? Going to bottom, counter gank here. AKS though realizes he's in trouble. Pops Song of the Siren, he's going to go that way. Oh, no, he thinks he can juke around this way. Or oh, that way, that way. All right, yeah, he is. No, wait, change his mind again. Looks like Wisp and Cow's like actually could have cut him off if they wanted to, but they just actually ended up porting straight back. Ah, there we go. Chaos Knight is out of mana. That's why they decided. Now, Wisp may actually pick up Arcanes here just to help out Chaos Knight. He really does need... Yeah, there we go. He will pick up. And there's the Tether. Tether, and then there's that burst of mana that Chaos Knight loves. And this is going to keep him very, very gank. We may even see Chaos Knight just stop. Like, he's on 19 to 5. He's just going to stop farming. And he's just going to charge around and get kills happening here. And I think they're actually going to just try and buy time for Goblack to get some farm as well. They're just trying to get Windrunner, Darkseer, and Chen some farm here. If they get some farm, get there early. Mechs, get there early. Four stars, all those little nice items to early on. They can quite easily bust down a lot of towers and maybe even try and take some like a 25 minute racks. That is definitely a distinct possibility. Especially if they can try and make a push during the next daytime. The next day cycle. Night Stalker is going to be really, really hard pressed to have any effect at all. Especially if he skips his ult just to try. And uh, make it still slightly more effective. 
We'll see in a moment there. Meanwhile, though, tier 2 tower is going to get dropped here. We might see a Council and Wisp pop down here in a second, try and isolate somebody. Windrunner is still skulking about here. She could try and come and set up something with a good shackle. Though. It looks like they're going to let this tier 1 go. Wisp and Chaos Knight. No, here we go. They're thinking about doing something here. I hope you're going to pick off Wisp orbing up there and also tethering up. They're getting ready to try and pick somebody off. Well, that's it. Virtus Pro sort of five manning here, trying to stay together. As soon as I said that, they split up into a 3 and a 2. Never mind. That said, Virtus Pro, fortunately for them, there are no Radiant Wars down here, so they're not going to see them splitting up and then go and go and pick them off. In fact, they're possibly even hoping somebody's going to come up here and start trying to farm, and they'll port up there and try and pick them off. Meanwhile, Tier 1 in the mid likely to drop down here as well. They might come down here to defend the Tier 2 once they get this Tier 1 mid. Again, Whisk could quite easily pull down there to help save the day. He can just get a pick up a couple of easy kills. And now, Kao's not getting close to finishing off his drums there. Most like Winner already has a mech, a 10 minute mech. And it's just coming out like she's got 43 and 9, which is not it's a little bit slow, but it's alright. There we go, Paul coming in now. There we go, Surge in. Will we see a back? We're just take a reality rip there. There's a static rail. There's the electric vortex as well. As it looks like they are going to try and drag him in there. As it looks two seconds done there on Kazai. Kazai in some trouble. Doesn't have his ult up for 13 seconds. Song of the Siren could have saved the day. Shackle shot pinning down Night Stalker. Night Stalker's toast. A Chen nuke there. Going to finish off Storms, but they're going for five now. Can they finish off Santa? They need some kind of stun. Reality rip going to try and take that out. Not going to happen though. GG well played at 11 minutes in. To be fair, 16 to 2, and then Night Stalker is a complete and utter dead weight. 0 and 6 before the first night is over. I mean, Night Stalker has to be 6 and 0. Oh my god. Empire making complete mockery of Virtus Pro, decimating their lines, and this will be a very quick first game. Alright, guys, so a quick 5 minute break, and then we'll be over into game number 3, technically game number 3, and Virtus Pro will need to win this one to stay alive. Empire will be on two wins and Virtus Pro will have to win that one to stay alive otherwise they will be knocked down into second place in the game who knows I mean if Empire score another 10 minute victory I think that will be the fastest best of five series in go to two history I've got to say I don't think there's been a quicker one anyway guys thanks for watching we'll be back in about five minutes